So welcome teachers to this ninth virtual session. Today we are going to be talking about rules and consequences with our virtual trainer, Carlos Monroy. Hello, Kike. How are you? Good. Good, Danny. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Thank you for being in this virtual session and sharing from your knowledge and experience. It's a pleasure. So remember, teachers, that in the Teaching Health platform, you can find more courses, material, formats, and a community to share about teaching English. Today, the topic is rules and consequences. The experience of Carlos Monroy goes from academic to working experience in the English file. He is studying a master's in learning strategies. He is certified with ITUT, SIT, VP, TESO, and he's an industrial engineer. In the working experience, he is a teacher in the English language programs of the U.S. Embassy. He is a university teacher at Kunori. He is the academy director of Goal Academy, and he is a TTS trainer. He works also in the access and SEAL uh, programs. So, Kike, it's a pleasure for us to have you here and to be sharing this important topic with many teachers in Guatemala. Thank you, Danny. I'm glad to be here too as well, and I'm ready to, to share part of the knowledge and experience that we have had during uh, this uh, experience uh, in the teaching area. Thank you a lot. So, what if we start with the goals of the session? The first one will be to identify five classroom rules. The second one, to identify five classroom rule-breaking consequences to help manage the class more effectively. Then we have to learn the criteria for establishing rules and consequences. And lastly, to share some experiences on establishing rules and consequences. So, Kike, what is a rule? According to Cambridge Dictionary, a rule is an accepted principle or instruction that states the way things are or should be done and tells you what you are allowed or not allowed to do. Okay. Danny, what is a consequence? A consequence, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, is a result of a particular action or situation often one that is bad or not convenient. So we're going to be talking about this, focus on the teaching file, right? Exactly, yes. Uh, that's part of uh, one of the techniques of uh, classroom management. Remember that classroom management involves so many areas, so many tools, so many techniques, and rules and consequences is one of those techniques that help the teachers manage the class more effectively. Okay. To start with uh, uh, this uh, technique, Danny, we are going to watch some class scenarios, five in total. So this is the process we are going to do. First, we are going to watch the scenario. Then we are going to um, talk about the rule and consequence that applies to that scenario. So let's watch the first one. Okay. Hey teacher, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good, and you? I'm great. Uh, according to the agenda, what is the first thing that we need to do today? Well, according to the agenda, we need to check the homework. Okay, so let me share a screen so we can grade the students on Google Classroom. We can start with this one, right? Yeah, let's just do so that. Let's see the classwork, and yeah. This is the homework. Gosh. Hey, they, they didn't present it. Yeah, they haven't turned in the homework. So what can we do? Well, we need to find a way to improve this. Okay. Yeah. And that way, uh, Danny is setting the first rule, right? Students didn't... Uh, uh, present didn't turn in the homework, and you see the teachers asking, they, what, what, what can we do? But I well, think that, that, that happens a lot now that we're teaching online, right? Like, teach, students have a problem sometimes uploading the homework, or they just distract themselves playing video games or being in social media. Yes, that's Thank true. Sharing about that's true. It. So, let's move to the uh, rule number one, or the rule of uh, scenario one. Turn in your homework 
on time. If a student or the students break this rule, what would the consequence be, Danny? The consequence would be that the student is in charge of reminding their classmates to turn in their next homework on time. So that's the consequence that I suggest for this uh, rule. Remember that uh, part of the learning process in teaching is uh, to have uh, or to teach students to be more responsible with their tasks or the homework that they have to do. Sometimes we hear students complaining about too much homework. In most of the cases, I will say they are right, Danny, because uh, we as teachers sometimes just want to give homework to them, but that kind of homework is meaningless, right? To enforce this kind of rule, I will suggest the teachers not only to set the rule, but also to think about meaningful homework for students. So they engage into them and they are able to finish or complete them on time and uh, turn the homework in the date established by the teacher. Okay, that's a good rule and a good consequence. Let's move to scenario two. Hello, dear students. Uh, we're going to review yesterday's topic and it is about the present continuous. So I have a presentation here and I'm going to Teacher, present. I have a question. Yeah, tell me. What is the meaning of shaking? Shaking? So, for yes. example, uh, when someone scares you, you stay like this, so it's shaking, right? So okay. Just someone is scary. Okay. All right. So, as I was telling sure. you, I'm going to present. Yeah, tell me. I have a, uh, I have a question. Well, I didn't understand the homework. Uh, okay, so don't worry, uh, Diana Medina can help you. So she's in charge of checking the homework, so she knows about it, okay? All right, so as I was telling you, <coughs> the presentation is about present continuous. how do you yeah. say associate in English? Uh, you say scared, okay, scared. So uh, the presentation Teacher. is about present continuous. I, how, do yes, say, how do you say casa embrujada in English? Uh, okay, uh, Nancy can help you with that word. Okay, she knows about it. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so as I was telling you, yeah. the presentation is about present continuous. Yes. Who How is asking me? Experience. I uh, say experience. Experience. Oh, you. Okay, you're welcome. So, <laughs> poor teacher. Yes. Uh, he was trying to introduce the topic and students kept asking him questions, right? Mm -hmm. So I uh, also recommend to set uh, a rule for the students to participate in an organized way. So let's, uh, let's go to the next rule. And Danny, would you like to read it, please? Sure. In this case, the rule would be raise the hand if you want to participate. If you want to speak. Yes, if uh, the student breaks this uh, rule, Danny, the consequence uh, should be students must keep track of the students who want to participate and gives terms in order, in the order they raise their hand. Students must keep track of the students who want to participate and gives terms in the order they raise their hand. Um, we like the students to participate in class. We want students to participate in our classes, but we want to do that in an organized way. Uh, like you saw in the video, um, students were just asking questions, interrupting the teacher, and they stopped the flow of the, of the class. So there should be a, a consequence for those students that are not following these kinds of rules. And one way would be to keep track of the ones who want to participate, right? So if, as you said in the rule, they raise their hand, and then the person who broke the rule in the class or in the previous class, take notes, keep track, right, of the students who want to participate. And when the teacher gives the time for uh, questions or for comments, that student gives turns, uh, the turn to the, to the, um, 
students who raised their hands. Yeah, I think it's very clear. Good, so let's uh, move to scenario three. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Welcome to our virtual class. Today's lesson is about food and drinks. So it is so nice to see you all. Well, at least see your names. It is very clear in there, right? Teacher is speaking to names, right? On the screen yeah. and not to faces. How would you feel, Danny, if you see that kind of situation? Or I don't know if you have already experienced that. Wow, I, I would feel like if I am teaching alone in my classroom, like if no one is in there. <laughs> yes. Well, the, I, I would say also we should uh, rule that uh, kind of uh, situation in, in our classroom, right? And, and the rule will be to uh, have uh, the video cameras on during class. Now, what will happen if students break that kind of rule? Danny? If they break this rule, the consequence will be give an explanation privately to the instructor for why the camera was off and come up with a solution to have the camera on for the next class. Yes, uh, this rule basically applies for virtual classes, right? Face to face, I don't think that's a way we can uh, set this kind of rule. And um, first, we want to make sure that students are in class, right? And how do we do that? But having them uh, have their cameras on during class. And um, but the most important part of, of this rule, I will say, Danny, is that we are able to see through the cameras the students' reactions, the students' behavior, which also gives us feedback on how our lesson is uh, impacting their learning process, right? So during the lesson, we can make some adjustments just in case the students are feeling bored, tired, etc. And we can have that kind of feedback if the students have their cameras on. Otherwise, as you said, you will feel like you're teaching uh, alone. In no one. Yeah, I think it's very, some, it's very important now that we are teaching online uh, to have this classroom manage about cameras and the devices that students are using because that's the only way we can see them. We cannot see them other way. So it's important to have like a visual uh, representation of how students are feeling, how they are reacting to the class. And sometimes the students have the camera on, but they have like something in front or they are yeah. not showing their faces or they are just out of the range of the teacher. So maybe they are doing something else. We don't know. So that's something that we should uh, state with these rules too. Exactly, exactly. Yes, and that's what when when uh, when you when the students have the camera on, you are able to see that, right? So it's also important to tell them that you know they they should be in the class by you know you want to see their their faces, right? Their reactions. Yeah. So you can follow up on that as well. Mm -hmm. And scenario four, guys, uh, we have been practicing the pass of the verse. Now I have a question. Who can tell me what is the pass of do? Come on, uh, what is the pass of do? <laughs> I feel the teacher. Yeah, it's uh, complicated when you're teaching a topic and then you ask questions and students do not respond, right? <laughs> Uh, I mean, if the students didn't understand the topic, at least say something, right? At least they should say, hey, this is what I understood, or I didn't understand the topic, but just staying quiet in there, teacher doesn't get any, any feedback from them. Yeah, I think so, that has happened to many of us. Now that we are teaching online, if in the past the students in the classroom, they were afraid of raising their hands or speaking up or participating, now that we are teaching online, it's easier for them to avoid these opportunities of participating. Exactly, exactly. So I suggest also to set or to have a rule 
for that kind of uh, student behavior. Danny, would you like to read the rule? Yes. Active participation in class. If the student breaks this uh, rule, Danny, the consequence is that a uh, student gives a brief summary of the topic at the end of the class. Uh, learning should be a, an active process. And I think it's part of the responsibility of the teachers to plan lessons that involve the students or that are student-centered. Uh, mm -hmm. So they are able to participate, to engage in the activities. However, even if uh, teachers do their best uh, planning their lessons and doing it uh, student-centered, we will have some students that will be passive and they just want to stay aside, they are shy, they don't want to participate, right? Yeah. And there should be a rule that uh, somehow will um, uh, engage them or push them to participate in class. And one way as, uh, uh, to do it is, as we see here, is a uh, student gives a brief summary, right? And by doing that, uh, we are already engaging the student into the lesson, into the topic, because student first has to listen to what's you know, uh, happening in there, or to listen to what the teacher and the students are saying. And since uh, that student is giving a summary at the end of the class, he or she has to take notes. Mm -hmm. So there is some writing in there. And at the end, share those notes. So basically, listening, reading, and speaking skills are performed by students, by the student with this uh, consequence, right? So, yeah, so let's say that we are in actually teaching a lesson and a student breaks this rule, like the student has not participated at all during the lesson. How do you make this student know that this rule or the, the consequences being applied on him. Do you tell him or how? Yes, if it's at the beginning of the class and the student is not participating at all, uh, I will approach uh, him or her privately. And uh, will, uh, I will say the first thing that I will do is just you know, encourage and remind him, remind the student that there is a rule, right? So I will say the first thing is just a reminder. But if we still see that the student is not participating, then we go again privately and say, hey, there is a consequence. You know the rules. You do not participate. You are giving a summary at the end of the class, right? And depending if, uh, on the time, that same class uh, could be the, the, the time when we apply this consequence or uh, the following class that we have with them. But we should do it privately. We don't have to do it in front of all the students. We want to build the students' self-esteem mm -hmm. and not you know, uh, just uh, telling this uh, in, in front of the class. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And the last scenario, Danny? Good morning. Good morning, Professor. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Today, we are going to learn about animals. What animals do you know? <laughs> that didn't happen 20 years ago, Danny, when I was in <laughs> class. And now it's happening a lot. Yeah, it happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. So what did you observe in that uh, scenario, Danny? Yeah, I think that we maybe don't see it like that now with virtual classes, but actually, yes, like the cell phones of the students are just at their hands. So they can be like this, and right now I am using my cell phone, and maybe you don't notice, but it happens. Students get distracted with devices very easily. Yes, uh, I have an, an an anecdote about that. Like a uh, couple of weeks ago, a uh, teacher said, "Hey, you know this student is using WhatsApp." Mm -hmm. He said, "Hey, how do you know that? Are you able to to see it because the student had the camera on?" And say, well, how, how do you know that that student is using the 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 the, cell, the the WhatsApp? And she said, well, I can see my WhatsApp, and I can see that that student is online. 
And then when I see her face, you know, I she's looking down like like typing. I don't know if that's something that I mean that was an interpretation, but it was kind of like interesting to see that yeah. that teacher was able to monitor right the, the the behavior of that student. Yeah, new ways to monitor. Yes, so there should be also a rule for for these kinds of uh, of behavior, right? And um, and the rule will be implement a phone storage system in the class. This rule, I will say, Danny, will apply more for face-to-face -face classes than um, a virtual class, right? So, um, because uh, uh, implementing a phone storage system could happen if we are all, you know, in the same place having the, the class. Yeah, physically. Yes, physical space. So if uh, the stu student uh, breaks this rule, what would the consequence be, Danny? If a student breaks this rule, the consequence will be students searches for a tip on how to manage and handle cell phones effectively and share it with classmates in the next class. Thank you, Danny. Yes, um, as I said, we want to build people up. We want to build uh, the students uh, on the students' uh, behavior, right? And cell phones can become um, our best friend if we are, use them for academic purposes, right? But sometimes um, that's not the case. Students uh, start using their cell phones or even get distracted by a message they get. Even if they don't touch their cell phones, they get distracted. Uh, so in some uh, classrooms, what I have done is that we have a very nice box. We have a student who collects the cell phones at the beginning of class, and we send the cell phones for vacations, right? So students can concentrate in class. Now, if in my lesson, I have an activity where the students have to use their cell phone, then they get it back, use the cell phone for that academic activity, and then we put them back on vacations. And uh, also, uh, the consequence of, of as, as we said, of breaking this rule is that students search, uh, searches for a tip on how to manage and handle the cell phones uh, effectively. That's very important because we want the students to learn the use of the cell phones, how to use them appropriately and in the appropriate time. That will help them for classes, face-to-face -face classes, virtual classes, but also when they are just working by themselves doing homework. Because if they learn that tip, they will apply it uh, in, in, in the context, in the area where, where, where they are uh, performing. That's right. Okay, so now that we finished talking about the five scenarios, I think we can move to the guideline, Kike. Yes. In order to um, set good rules and consequences, we should follow a uh, guideline to be able to, to be effective. Uh, uh, to be able to have a, to be effective in, the, in our classroom. And to know how to create these rules in the future for our own classes, right? Exactly. Maybe you don't want to apply these rules that I just presented, but if you have a guideline, then you are able to create your own with the students, the, depending on uh, on your context and on your needs. That's right. So the first uh, uh, um, guideline is to, uh, the rules should be in a form of a positive statement. Mm -hmm. Danny, can you read the, the, the example? Danny, can you read the example? Turn in homework on time. And I will read the second one. Don't turn in homework late. We want to build a community in our classes. And we should try to avoid negative statements as much as possible. And of course, rules uh, are not the exception. We want students to know what behavior we expect from them, not uh, what they should avoid. Mm -hmm. So that's why we should take them into the positive, into the affirmative way. So they start building 
not avoiding something. It's like focusing on what we want, not focusing on what we don't want. Exactly, exactly. Very nice, thank you. Would you like to read the second one? Yeah. Uh, rules should be stated clearly. Yes, thank you. And we have a couple of examples here. Raise your hand if you want to speak. And the other one, and the other one, speak yes. in class. So the more specific uh, we are with the rules, the easier it will be for students to learn and also to follow them. On the second one, uh, that is in red, you see that it's too general. We just say, we just tell the students, speak in class, they will speak anytime, they will speak whatever they want to speak, because we are not being specific, right? So they should be stated uh, very clear. Yeah, and I think that students are very creative and they, they are smart thinking about ways of how to do things easier for them. So if you give them a very general rule, like in this case, speaking class, they will find a way of speaking about anything that is maybe not related to the topic. But well, they will not break the rule, but still not yes. accomplish what you want, right? So we have to be exactly. Specific. Yeah, and you will not be able to apply the consequence because uh, the rule says uh, speaking class, right? Yeah. It's not clear. Right? It's not clear for the, for the students. Yeah, mm -hmm. or maybe it can, it can happen also with the rule of not using the cell phone in the class, which is in a negative way. Maybe it can be clearly use the cell phone when the teacher uh, asks you to or something like that. Exactly. Yeah, that could be another one. Like if uh, in a lesson you have, uh, uh, you usually have uh, activities that involve cell phone, then that could be one of the rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last one, rules should be few. Uh, according to uh, teaching as leadership source, uh, they say that it should be between three to five rules. I will say seven at the most are okay but no more than that, because then it's um, complicated for students to learn them and to follow them. So yeah, you're right. Now that I remember about my experience with uh, past classes, when students come up with the rules, uh, that's true. Uh, they don't have like more than five or six rules because they are the ones that uh, create them and they don't want to be like, uh, having a lot of information or memorize a lot of information to follow. Uh, that's why they come up with five, four rules. And it's easier for them to, to name them, right? And to remember them. Exactly. exactly. Yes. And now let's move to the uh, consequences guideline. Danny, would you like to read the first one? Consequences should be gradual. Uh, what it, it means by uh, it means that um, okay, we'll go back. Uh, this guideline uh, means that um, if one student, for example, keeps um, breaking the rules, we should move from a less severe consequence to a more severe consequence. For example, the first time that student breaks the rule, you might not want to apply the consequence right away. You just might want to have a non-verbal reminder. Like the student is distracting the teacher or the or their uh, classmates, you just stop teaching for it. And then in that way, they will realize that you are reminding them the, uh, the rules, right? But if the student continues breaking the rules, then we move to verbal reminders, warnings, the consequences. And if they keep uh, breaking the rules, then uh, you should you apply uh, more severe consequences, like taking the student to the school principal and have a discussion about that behavior. Mm -hmm. The second is uh, consequences should be natural 
and logical. What that means is that rules and consequences should be connected. You are now going to give a consequence to a situation or a, to a scenario that is not related to what you want students to, to improve. Remember that what these kinds of consequences are for improvement. These kinds of consequences are for students' improvement. We are not punishing them, right? So they should be um, very well connected. Yeah. And the consequences. And the last one, Danny, would you like to read it, please? Consequences should maintain the dignity of the person. Uh, we as teachers should address the behavior of the students, not the students, right? And we also have to be consistent with uh, when applying the, the, the consequences. If you have three um, students breaking the same rule, you apply the same consequence to the three students, right? So you... Uh, um, treat them equally. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this applies to some of us that sometimes make the mistake of having irrational or not logical uh, consequences like, um, I don't know, having the student doing something fun so the rest of the class makes fun of the student in a way of uh, punishing them for something wrong that they did. And I think that's like not logical. Uh, yes. It affects the dignity of the person. So it breaks two of the guidelines. Yes. Yes, you're right, Danny. Um, a student is breaking the rule. Uh, come to the front and dance in front of everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And then the students start making fun, as you said. That's, that's not a consequence. That's a punishment, right? And we are talking here about having consequences. And the consequences are for the students to learn and to improve that behavior or that misbehavior that's right okay. and now uh, the application of um, rules and consequences uh, Danny would you use these uh, class rules in your teaching context after we have discussed about them yeah I, I think that these rules will help me more now that we are teaching online there are more things that we have to manage and I think that uh, they are needed so I will use them. And, and, Kike, should, and Kike, should the rules and consequences be established by the teacher, by the students, or both? As I mentioned before, Danny, uh, in the classroom, we try to build community, right? And that means that everyone in the classroom should be involved in the process. In this case, when we establish um, rules and consequences, of course, both the teacher or the teachers and the students should be involved into establishing them, right? So in this case, you want the, um, the students to buy in in, in, this, in, in in the rules and consequences and also be accountable for them. And it will be much easier if you involve the students because uh, that's their own creation. They created those rules. Yeah. They gave the ideas on those rules. They work on those rules. Mm -hmm. So they will work hard to follow them because it's their own creation. That's right. Yeah. But, and how do you, or how would you recommend a teacher to have students creating the rules? You ask them to bring ideas as homework, or is it a specific class for that? How can that happen? Uh, I, I would say um, you should, um, if you have like uh, at the beginning of the course, for example, uh, you tell them that you are going to be creating um, or you are going to be working on some rules and consequences uh, to, to have a good environment in, uh, in, in the classroom. And you might have, if, might have them go home and brainstorm some ideas or, on what those rules and consequences should be, and maybe you can give them a couple of examples so they have uh, something to, to start working on. And then the next day of class, you can make groups, you have uh, group discussions, and um, 
and they start uh, working on, on, on those ideas, on those rules. And then they start presenting to, to the class. And of course, you have to guide them, right, uh, in, in that process. So they come up with the rules that are expected to, to be in the class, right? Because students might think of rules that um, are not logical or are, or are not a part of, of, of the classroom or are not needed in the classroom. Yeah are more with the consequences. They might think like punishing. Exactly, exactly. Actually, that has happened to me um, because students start thinking about dancing, jumping, yeah. and buying food for their classmates, uh, etc. They have to sing in front of, and, and so we have to, to make sure that they know, right, uh, uh, what a consequence is. So yeah. they work, so the, it's, uh, so they have to, um, be guided by the teacher in this process. Excellent. Danny, if you had to choose two of the five uh, class rules that we discussed in this session, which ones would you choose and why, Danny? Hmm. Um, all of them are good, but I think that for my context, I will choose the having the camera on rule uh, because it sometimes some students uh, turn on the camera at the beginning of the class, but then they just put something in front or a cycle is there like this. I would like to observe them during the class. Then the other one will be the rule for um, active participation. Was it, I think. Because, yes. well, I have some students that uh, sometimes participate as I have some students that never participate and some students will participate a lot but if they were shy in the classes when we were face to face i think that now uh, it's easier for they for them to avoid opportunities to participate and that rule will help me to have them paying attention during the class like if they don't participate during the class at the end they will have to have taken notes of what was talked about so that would be like a way of ensuring that they are um, learning or at least taking notes and paying attention. Exactly. So even if they were not focused on the class, but as you said, if they have notes, uh, if they, they can refer back to them later, right? So yep. hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Well, based on my experience, um, I have uh, some pieces of advice uh, for the teachers on uh, uh, regarding to setting um, rules and, and consequences. And the first advice I will uh, give is the, to know your students, to know their learning style, their behavior, the context, their culture. They come from different backgrounds, social, economic status, etc. So it is very important to know uh, who we are teaching to in order to establish rules and consequences that will not threaten their dignity and that are logical, as we mentioned before. Also, explain the students the how and why of setting rules and consequences so they know the purpose of establishing those rules and also choose age-appropriate rules. Rules for kids are not the same than rules for teenagers and adults because they behave differently. And as we were mentioning, Danny, we should involve uh, and guide the students in the process of setting rules and consequences. So they buy in and they hold accountable for them. And make sure that the rules and consequences are connected. We want to give a consequence that will improve the student's behavior not to break that rule again. And when you have those rules written, put them in a visible place. So that will be a reminder for the students that there are some rules and there are some consequences in there. Yeah. So it becomes a choice they choose to misbehave, right? And they know what's the consequence of it. 
So it's very important those uh, rules and consequences are visible. Remind them. And I will say the most important advice is to connect with the students and guide them in the process of following the rules and, and the consequence of that will be that you as a teacher will not have to implement any consequence in your class because you want them to improve as a human being, as a student, as a person. So you want to guide them in the process. So probably the first month of your class, you have lots of misbehaviors, but these consequences will help you uh, build the student's uh, knowledge, the student's awareness, and hopefully they will start behaving uh, much better and not breaking the rules that were set in the class. Yeah. Thank you for that advice. Uh, from my experience, I have just three points. The first one would be that rules are, should be set at the beginning of the course. Sometimes when, when I was teaching, like during the year, I noticed that some problems were happening, like no participation, misbehavior of students. But when I wanted to apply rules, we have had been like that for like six months or three months. So the problem had been there for a long time. And when the rule was applied, students felt like uh, not comfortable because they didn't come up with the idea, right? So it's good that we set these rules at the beginning of the course. Uh, second one is that rules are part of the learning process of the students, as we mentioned during the workshop. So they have not to be seen as punishments Sometimes we think uh, normally that a consequence uh, has to be something negative for the students or something that they should uh, experience badly so they don't want to experience this again. But no, it's for the, for the learning process. And seeing that way, it's easier for you to think about ideas, about what consequences to create for your rules. No? And the third one, is that rules uh, help develop discipline in students. And discipline helps students being better citizens and human beings in the, in the future. That's correct. And we want uh, our students to be good students, good people in the class and outside the class, right? Yeah. So those consequences uh, should be to, to form and transform them into better people, into better persons. And to finish uh, with uh, this session, Danny, I really like this quote by Benjamin Franklin, and I'm sure many of the teachers have read it. And I hope many of the teachers are applying it, which is the most important, right? Danny, can you read the quote, please? Tell me, and I forget, teach me, and I remember, involved me, and I learn. Benjamin okay. Franklin. Okay, um, yes, and this is the most important, right? We as teachers are not just teaching. We are involving the students in the process. So it is very important to keep in mind that because that will create a much better environment, a much better learning environment process and the students uh, will be able to connect among themselves, but also with the teacher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kike, for sharing about this awesome topic that I think is something very important for us as teachers to know. And it was amazing to know teachers. Now you know that there are specific guidelines to follow on creating your rules. You have some examples here that you can apply. You might modify them for your context, but make sure that you follow these guidelines. And thank you once more, Kike, for sharing about this topic and from your experience. It was an honor for me, Danny. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, teachers, and see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.